All right. So today's topic is Sare Sati. So the only thing that you need to do in Sare Sati is go to this particular place and give this donation at this time, at this murat to this particular person and you're out of Sare Sati. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, fortunately, it doesn't work like that. I didn't say unfortunately. I said fortunately, it doesn't work like that, right? So many times or most of the times people are inquiring about Sare Sati remedies, right? My Sare Sati is coming. What's going to happen? It's going to wreak havoc in my life, right? So how can I protect myself from this terrible onslaught of Sare Sati? Why is it terrible? Because I have seen so many videos in YouTube where they say that Sare Sati is the worst period of your life, right? It's going to beat the hell out of you and you're going to be left with nothing and nobody, you are going to die in loneliness, right? This is what many people say in YouTube. <laughs> so I have a detailed uh, series on Sare Sati. Many videos I have, so I will try to pin them uh, at the end here. So if you have not watched uh, some my Sare Sati videos, uh, please watch them. And please understand before you watch this remedy video that it doesn't mean that your life is going to be ruined if you are about to start your Sare Sati, right? So get out of this misconception that one transit, one transit of one planet can ruin your life. No, it doesn't and it cannot. Now you will say, oh, but I know so many examples whose lives have been ruined during Sare Sati. Actually, it's not Sarasati. It is the Mahadasha and the Antardasha, which actually brings difficulties in our life. But of course, you can always say that if you have a difficult Mahadasha and a difficult Antardasha, then Sarasati can sometimes act as the icing on the cake, as you say, right? So things can get even more tough sometimes because, as I say, the sun represents the kingdom. The things that we think we own, not that we own, the things that we think we own, right? And then moon represents how do we feel about our kingdom, right? So when Sarasati comes, Sarasati is a transit of Saturn related to the moon, right? So I hope at least you are all aware of what Sarasati is. So I am not going to define it. If, if you have any confusions, please let me know in the comments. I will definitely answer or you can watch my Sarasati videos, right? So therefore, because it impacts the moon, then we can feel not so nice about our existing kingdom, right? Do you feel sometimes? <laughs> Everything is there, but still it's, it doesn't quite feel right. It doesn't quite feel great. It doesn't quite feel good, right? Sometimes does it happen? Do you feel like that? Well, that can be sometimes because of the transit of Saturn sometimes, right? Because Saturn shows um, deficiencies, inadequacies, right? It shows longing desires which are not fulfilled, right? Anyway, so please watch the Sare Sati videos if you haven't. And if you discover somehow, fortunately or unfortunately, that you are running Sare Sati, then you can do certain remedies, which I will uh, try to share with you, right? But before I share, you can also share other remedies which has worked for you, right? So you can please write it down in the comments and you can help me and everybody else watching this video, right? And before we begin, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your... Uh, Sare Sati or any Dasha, Anta Dasha or mar marriage, career, health, please go down to my website, which you will find in the description section. All right. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it and also press the bell icon maybe. <laughs> now, the first thing that you have to understand before you do any remedy for Sare Sati is that it can only affect you if you have a bad moon, right? Now, I'm not going into definition of what is a good moon, bad moon that I've done a thousand times, but ask yourself this question. Does it happen sometimes that you get into depression if you are idle? Does it happen that uh, you start thinking of all the negative things 
at the end of your day not at the end of your life at the end of your day at least right in the night when you are in your bed does it happen that you ignore all the positives and you only focus on the negatives you are not having any gratitude you you are not grateful for the things that you have but you are ungrateful uh, or you are angry or you are frustrated you are disappointed always with the things that you do not have so you got to understand that those people who do not have a mature understanding of life who do not have the wisdom of the scriptures they are going to be very seriously very severely affected by sarasati not because they were bad horoscope because their outlook towards life in general is terrible right so the first remedy for sarasati is to read the scriptures especially the bhagavad gita and the shrimad bhagavatam because why do i say this because when sarasati comes uh, you can get a feeling that the world doesn't treat you well enough or to the extent that you deserve right so there the understanding of law of karma comes to your rescue because you have to understand either it's a good dasha bad dasha good transit bad tr- transit it is all because of the law of karma right and when i say this it may sound very fatalistic oh law of karma you know i did something a thousand hundred twenty three lifetimes back and now i am paying the goddamn price right well the thing is either you like it or you don't it is we ourselves who are responsible so once you understand this lesson then this is very empowering because this help this gives us a conviction that if i can suffer for my bad activities my sins my wrong doings then i can also be rewarded for my good activities right so many times people say you know law of karma is the biggest injust injustice right well actually actually they're very foolish who say this because law of karma is the perfect law of justice made by god himself right so therefore there can be no injustice so understand that if you are suffering it is you who have done something in the past with somebody right because of which this suffering is coming so therefore stop blaming stop doing blame game stop saying he did this she did this you know he left me she left me he fired me he insulted me he lied to me he did this she did that you know they did this you know them it was them they them he <laughs> she so understand that it is our own responsibility right of course now you may say oh but i was very good but still this happened right it can happen sometimes because the final verdict of law of karma is that you know we do our actions and then in the previous lifetimes and then we have the karma of this life which is you know the kriya mana karma which we are actively doing right so the final result that comes is is it's a mixture of all this you know our uh, our pravritti which is you know our inclinations and our past life karma and the actions in this life and of course how we use our free will right but at the end you have to understand it is all why because of me so this is the most empowering remedy you have to understand that it is my responsibility i have put myself in this mess and therefore it is my responsibility to bring myself out of this mess of course you can take help of others you can take guidance you can take advice you can go to gurus astrologers counselors tantrics you know experts all number of people but you have to understand that at the end it the buck stops with me right i have to get myself out of this because i am responsible for this right so because lord krishna says in the gita right that this world this material world is dukhala mashashwatam it's a place of misery right so we are miserable because we are forgetful of god right that is the ultimate definition of misery forgetfulness of god but even at a mundane level at a materialistic level we have done some sinful activity because of which we are suffering right so once you understand this then you have to understand as i said the next remedy is you have to strengthen your mind strengthen your moon right because if your moon is strong then sarasati cannot affect you beyond a certain extent right so i also have a video on moon remedy so if you have not watched it then please go and watch it you can type exotic astrology uh, moon remedies you will surely find that video so 
please watch that video that video will tell you how you can strengthen your inner consciousness which you experience through the mind right so the mind is a very important planet because uh, i mean the moon is a very important planet because chandrama manaso jata right that that's the famous shloka right? that the moon represents the mind and the mind is see it's like a mirror right whenever you have a uh, or not mirror sorry it's like a glass right so if you have a red glass everything appears red if you have a green glass everything appears green if you have a transparent glass everything appears transparent right so therefore if you have a black glass you can't see anything even if there's everything you can't see why because your glass is black right it's as simple as that so once you understand that my view of this world depends on my consciousness the level of the elevation of my consciousness my mind right then you will understand that everything everything the way that i see it is because of my mind so when i see something as negative it necessarily does not mean that that thing or that person is negative it it can just sometimes mean that i am viewing that thing or that person in a negative way that is why that person or that situation is appearing to be negative right so therefore you have to understand that everything in this world everything that you see you experience you think it all depends on the mind so strengthen your mind please do it all right otherwise if your mind is uncontrolled then things can go haywire sometimes during sarasati all right so once you see that video and you take the necessary steps the next remedy that you have to understand is that you have to cultivate discipline in life period there's no there's no shortcut to success there there is no right there are no shortcuts so therefore be disciplined be understand this th- the fact that you cannot cultivate you cannot achieve anything great without cultivating discipline whether it is name fame success or you know good physique or you know lots of money or fan following or whatever it is you know big car or home or whatever that normally people desire it is all a product of hard work right so of course you can say oh but smart work is more important right but most of the entrepreneurs businessmen if you see their lives they have done smart work but nobody says you know you will be rich or famous or affluent or powerful without doing hard work right smart work adds to hard work but it cannot be a replacement for hard work so have a discipline have a proper schedule right having a schedule is very 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 important right because if you do not have a schedule then what happens is your mind has a lot of opportunities to go astray and go haywire right and then what happens is see the mind, you have to understand how the mind works it's again the mind you see it's just the game of the mind so the mind is like a software which is designed to keep us miserable by focusing on our shortcomings that's how the mind is designed by the material nature right the mind is not designed to make us happy you you think of any day when you know 10 good things happen to you right but imagine that same day one bad thing happens what happens at the end of your day when you come and sit and think oh how was my day you will most likely forget of all the 10 good things and you will only focus on the, that one negative thing that happened with you why 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 because that's the nature of the mind it is it's it's like a software which is made to give us misery right or rather it's a software which is made to experience the material world which is inherently miserable because we as spirit souls we are jivatma right we we are not this body we are spirit soul so it's like an incompatible situation of ourselves and the material material world right so the mind is by de- it's like a default situation that the soul has this mind and that's how he perceives this world and this world is a full of 
this world is full of deficiencies. You will always see there's some deficiency or, or the other anywhere and everywhere with anybody, right? So therefore, you have to administer the mind and you have to have discipline because if you do not have discipline, it is easier for your mind to torment you more, right? Because you keep thinking, thinking of all the best case scenarios, right? <laughs> even thinking of the best case scenarios, forget the worst case scenarios, even thinking of the best case scenarios can end, uh, can put you in misery. Why? Because you will overestimate yourself. You will underestimate your enemies or your troubles, your difficulties, and you will overestimate, right? So as much as being pessimistic is a problem, so can be being optimistic sometimes or rather over-optimistic, right? So that's a very delicate balance that you need to maintain in life, right? You also have, you need to be optimistic about life in general, but you need to be very realistic. Do not underestimate the power of the material world to give you suffering or to give you roadblocks. Do not underestimate that, all right? So this is one very important thing that you need to do. Do not give space to your mind. Make your day filled with activities. Either it's interacting with your family or your boss, your colleagues, you know, your friends or whatever it is. I, do, I don't care, but it should be filled with activities, right? And most important, but last but not the least, as they say, most important, if you do all of this, the other remedies and you don't do this, uh, you're in trouble. And that is, try to visit a spiritual community in the weekends, right? At least once a month, if not every week, if not every 15 days, at least once a month, right? My suggestion is, every weekend you should visit a spiritual community. Why? Because when you are in Sarasati and you feel miserable, when you go to a spiritual community, they will remind you that you are not this body, you are spirit soul. They will remind you of your original eternal constitutional position, right? As a servant of God. So when, so when you understand that, when you understand the greatness of God, which you will most likely or rather ideally which you should find in spiritual communities, then you will understand that this life that I have is important, but this is only temporary, right? I need to make the best use of a bad bargain. There are certain things in life which I will never be able to change or maybe I'm not able to change it as of now at least or maybe in the next five years I will change it or maybe next 10 years or maybe next 50 years, right? Or maybe I... I will need a hundred years to change it, right? So, so then you you will be re. You have to keep telling yourself the same principles of the Bhagavad Gita every day, right? That is why in the Srimad Bhagavatam there is a very beautiful verse. It says, you know, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. What, what does it mean? It, it means Nityam means every day. Bhagavata Sevaya means every day you should. Read the Srimad Bhagavatam. Every day you should hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? Why not once in a week? Why not once a month? Why not every alternate day? Why is it Nitya? Which means every day eternally. Why? Because our conditioning above this material world is so deep and so dead. It's so dark and so heavy that if we do not do it every day, we are going to miss it. We you will not understand how it happens, but if you do not do it every day, you are going to forget it, right? So therefore, read the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, read the divine texts like the Ramayana, the Mahabharat, right? At least these four, at least you may not read the Vedas, Upanishads, Puranas, you know, 18 Puranas, all the 108 Upanishads, four Vedas, I know it's not possible to read all of them. Even I have not read. Okay, but at least these four, we we must read. That's like non-negotiable, right? And when you go to a spiritual community, try to take inspiration from those who are senior to you, right? Senior doesn't mean they've come before you to spirituality, but that's one definition, but the other definition could be somebody who is senior to you in age or somebody who has a post and position or 
somebody who is more experienced than you, who is more knowledgeable, one who is more uh, aware of the scriptural truths, right? So any person within the spiritual community can be a potential senior because you do not know what somebody has done in their past life or in their past lifetimes, right? You may see, oh, I am uh, 40 years old. And this person is, you know, 20 years old. So I'm more experienced than him, right? But maybe in past lifetime, in the recent past lifetime or some other lifetimes, you know, that person might have done so many spiritual practices, much, much, much more than you, right? So uh, my Shiksha Guru used to say, whenever you go to a spiritual community, you should assume that everybody is your senior. Everybody is better than you. Everybody is more knowledgeable than you. Everybody is superior to you. Everybody is capable to enlighten you only then you can receive enlightenment as lord krishna says in the gita tadvidhi pranipate na pari prashnena sevaya yes upadek chanti te gyanam gyani darshina so i will end with this verse and i would love to know from you in the comments what does this verse means all right thank you very much for your patience and if you are new then please subscribe to the channel and if you have not watched the Sarasati videos, I will put it somewhere here, there. I hope you find them. All right. And if you want a consultation, please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll hopefully find him. No, you will surely find him right in your heart. All right. Thank you.